How's it going, PD team? I've got a valuable and time-saving tutorial for you today. This node tool that we're going to be building is useful for anyone that uses multi-channel image-based textures inside the Redshift render. It will absolutely clear up your node structures, make them simpler and easier to manage. I'm convinced you'll use it on every project. What we're going to be building today is a universal image loader, reducing what would be 25 nodes into one easy-to-manage package. Paired with our custom Ultra Triplanar node, you're reducing what would be a total of 50 nodes into two. This simple node will be the hub for your loading and managing of the color channels, metalness, roughness, anisotropy, and its rotation, emission, opacity, bump and normal, ambient occlusion, and displacement, covering all the most important channels for handling even the most complicated setups. This node will give you love in all the right places. With all that hype out of the way, let's dive in. Okay, so one of the things that bothered me when I switched from using a standard material to a redshift material was not having access to these simple image loaders where you could click this and load up an image. Uh, we don't have those buckets in the Redshift textures. And sometimes you're not creating materials from scratch. You're using existing materials that have multiple channels in them. This is much quicker. So I can, if I wanted ambient occlusion, I go to the diffusion. And I just load it up and it's super simple. Well, this node that I built out does that for us. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how it works. So here's the node we're going to be building today. You can see we have all the available outputs for all the inputs of the standard material that you're most likely going to use when you're doing image-based texturing. So this is a multi-layered image that's generally Generated. And if you notice, the bump and the displacement, because they're purple, means that we can cook these up directly into the bump channel and displacement channel without having to use an extra node. So you can put between this unified texture loader, the triplanar node that we created, the ultra triplanar controller, in between this and get control of these textures if you need tiling or you're going to need repeating and blending and all that good stuff. So these two can work in conjunction with each other. So let's take a look and see how this node works. So when we select the standard material, you notice there's no way to load up an image into it. So that's what this node does. So when we select it, we have buckets for all the main channels that you'll be using for all types of materials from dirt to rusty metal to polished steel to any kind of material that you can think of. These would be the main channels that you'd use to accomplish that. So all the channels are exposed. You can do less or you could do more. That's up to you, but this is a good jumping off spot for you to take your project to the next level. So with color, one of the common things that we like to adjust is the contrast, the hue shift, the levels and the brightnesses and the gamma. So that's all available to you in the color channel. Metalness is pretty simple. We can load up a image and then we can remap the metalness using this gradient ramp. Roughness, you can see we can also adjust the gradient ramp, but then there's also this interesting bucket called anisotropic. When we look at it, we can load up how much anisotropy is in the material, but then we also have rotation value as well, which isn't commonly used in materials, but it's made available for like brushed metals if you download a brushed metal that has that in there. And then there's something really interesting here. I've included in it a rotation offset. So let's say it's going 90 degrees. We can use this to rotate it 45 by subtracting or adding to that value to rotate the rotation input to depending on the camera angle. Emission does not have a remap. You could add a remap in there if you'd like. Bump, you can see we've included the loader and also included the bump amount. So the bump node is included inside of here so we don't have to hassle with floating nodes and reconnecting stuff and we have the height field. Ambient occlusion is great because we can load up the texture and then blend it with how much ambient occlusion we want because sometimes we don't want that much image-based ambient occlusion in the texture. So that allows us to blend that amount. Opacity and displacement. And again, we've included the displacement node inside so there's no hassle with getting the floating nodes. So let's go ahead and build this wonderful node out. Before we get started, I want to mention you want to start off downloading a texture from your favorite texture site. There's numerous ones out there and you're going to want to pick one that has between at least six textures or seven textures. So usually you can go with the metals or the brick ones. They'll have displacement in them and ambient occlusion and all the materials that you'll want to add. So it just makes it easier to troubleshoot. So go ahead before you start this and download a material of your choice that has at least six channel inputs, preferably seven. So this metal one is a perfect example. This diamond plate, you can see it's got roughness, two kinds of bumps, displacement, metalness, ambient occlusion, color channel, and so on. So this is a great jumping off spot. Okay, I've started off with a default standard material called a demo. And what I like doing is I'm going to come in here, give these a basic color of just a gray and get rid of the previews, drag them off to the side. And then I like getting rid of the inputs on the output node. So I'm going to just click and delete. And then we're going to go to our base here and we're going to add some inputs in here. We definitely need the overall tint. So I'm going to do control click on the dot, make sure it's not the keyframe. And that's going to be our ambient occlusion. We're going to go to reflection and add anisotropy and rotation. We need metalness, which is already added. Emission, opacity is already added. And I think that's all of them that we're going to be using. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to make a node that houses all of these nodes inside. So to do that, you just right click in the graph here and you'll see there's an empty group. We're going to click that, get rid of the preview, give it a name. I called mine universal texture loader, give it 
put a color. I like making my custom nodes 216, and then I slam the 100% on all of these, so I get this bright blue color. And first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna load up in it the inputs. So we're gonna start at the top and work our way down. So I'll do color, metalness, add new input, roughness, anisotropy, rotation, and you have to let go off these. Make sure you're not adding it to an existing output. Emission, opacity, bump, and overall tint, which is gonna be ambient occlusion. And there we go. So I'm gonna go here, drag displacement. And then what we do is we hold control and shift and click on the line to get a reroute like so. Now, when you're testing this, you're not gonna to wanna to plug them into all of these. Um, I'm starting it off with them all plugged in, but once you start loading in images, you're gonna to wanna to disconnect the ones that are not being used because they will give you inaccurate results. So now our inputs and outputs are correct. Let's go ahead and go inside. So what you do is you just double click or you click the little folder and we'll start up at the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a texture, type in TEX, call this color and we'll connect it to color. Now what we need to do is we need to, I like changing my inputs to red for the texture nodes. And then you're going to right click anywhere in this node, go to input and say file path. And that allows us to import the file path from this node. So I'm going to click and let go. And then if we go out, you'll notice we get a tag here, which we don't need. We can delete. But then when we select it, you can see in our inputs, we've got an image. So there's that. So we'll go back. And what we want to do is we want to make available the ability to change the hue, saturation, the levels, the balancing of the image, because not all the time does the texture color match what we're trying to get with the lighting setup that we need. So to do that, we're going to click and type in color, type in correct, and you'll see color correct. And not all of these nodes work this way, but sometimes you can click and drag it onto the line here and it will auto insert. And with our color, we're going to drag it below and then we're going to add gamma. So control click, contrast, hue shift, saturation amount and levels like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just click and let go and add all these to our input. And there you go. And this one is pretty simple. There's not really a lot going on. You're going to find that setting this node structure up is actually surprisingly very easy. So let's test it out. And you can see here's our bucket. Now, one thing that you're going to notice is our header is not correct. And also we want to group all these together in their own uh, structure. And we're missing a header on here. We want to give these a name. So this one's going to be color. So let's go ahead and do that. So what you do is you right click on the node, go to edit resource, and you get this scary dialog box. So if you've never seen this before, don't worry. It's actually pretty easy to, to learn. These are your inputs. And then these are your outputs. I very rarely touch the outputs. These inputs right here is when you select the node. That's what these are available to. So what we need to do is we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. And this is all the types of inputs that we can add. And down at the bottom is a separator and a group. So I'm going to take my group and add it to the top here. And what we're going to do is we're going to give it a name. I'm going to give it a name of color. Hit enter. And this is really important for this group to function properly. You need to give it a classification. So I'm going to say input because it's in the input group. And we can leave this as default open. We're going to uncheck that so it's closed by default. And then what we can do is we can drag each of these in like so, and then we can close it up. So let's close this window and try it out. So you can see it's closed and then we open it up and there's our properties. So this is working properly. Let's go ahead and do the next one. So we're gonna do metalness. So I'm gonna take my color node that I've added and control drag to make a new one. We're gonna call this metalness. We're gonna drag it in to metalness and then apply this into the next input here. So with metalness, we just wanna remap it. Now, because it's gonna be a black and white image, we can use just a default ramp. So I'm gonna double click, type in ramp, and we're gonna use the ramp here. And you can use the scalar ramp if you want. I prefer using just the regular ramp ramp for this. Actually, for this demo, I'm going to use the scalar ramp. Let's go ahead and do that. So then what you do with the scalar ramp is you can hit this with the control click and that gives us the availability to remap. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. So you made it this far. Clearly, you're enjoying the content. Would you consider clicking the thanks button on this video to help grow the channel's community so I can make more great content just for you? Any amount is greatly appreciated. If money is tight right now, then do me a favor and just smash that like button immediately. Now to the video. And that gives us the availability to remap. So now if we go out and select the node, you can see we have the input and the ramp. So I'm going to right click, say edit resource, scroll to the bottom, add a group below color. Make sure you don't drop it inside. Add the file name and the ramp. Give it a name called metalness. Hit enter. And we're going to change the classification to input. Default open. We're going to uncheck. And now you can see. Now sometimes the group name will not update. So let me go ahead and redo that. And you have to hit enter. And sometimes it doesn't stick. It's kind of a bug. So I'm going to redo it. There we go. So now metal's working. Sometimes it's a bug and you have to create a new group and remove the elements. So next we're going to work with roughness. So this one's one of the bigger channels. So go inside. We're going to take metalness and duplicate it. Add the input in. Give it a name of roughness. Add the input. And with this one, we're going to do a ramp as well. So I'm going to double click. I can actually just bring this ramp in. So I'm going to control drag. Add the input, add the output, and then add the ramp. And with roughness, have, we have two other channels that we're going to connect, anisotropic and rotation. So let's take a look and see what those have for us. So I'm going to select it here. And with roughness, you have IOR settings, anisotropy, and rotation. So we'll drag a roughness down, anisotropy. We're going to plug that one in. We'll also do a ramp. And then the next one, we're going to take and duplicate. 
call this rotation. So with rotation, this one's gonna be a trickier one. What we need to do is we wanna offset this, but we want it to offset and loop back, kind of like when you use a hue offset where you can move the slider from zero to 360 degrees and it kind of cycles between the color values. Well, we're gonna do that with the rotation value. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add because we wanna increase the value. So I'm gonna click add. And then next, what we wanna do is we want it to cycle back around. So it's gonna to add to one and then cycle back to zero. So to do that, we're gonna use a modulo, so MOD. So we're gonna take our scalar ramp, plug it into the input of the add, bring the output of the add into here, and then we're gonna drag this into rotation. And we need to make available this value right here. So this goes from zero to two. So this will be basically rotating the value. So we need to make it available. So we're gonna add this in. I'm gonna rename the from input two to rotation. I'm gonna clean it up by doing control shift, dragging this down, adding a reroute so it's cleaner. Next, what we're gonna do is we need to do the opacity. Let's just check real quick, see what's going on. So we don't have headers in here, so this is getting confusing. So let's go ahead and group this up before we move further. And let's rename this one. It says color here. Let's call this emission just to clear things up. So I'm going to right click, edit resource. So we're going to add a group, close metal so it's easier to see. Give this a name. So we'll call this roughness and add the input. And our first one is the roughness amount. Ramp is to remap it. And then the next set, this one here is going to be the anisotropic. So we're going to add another group inside below ramp, call it anisotropy and enter. Make sure it's set to input. We're going to add our first, which is rotation or is amount, then rotation. And if we look here at our node, when we open this up, we need headers in here because this is going to get confusing. So what we can do is we can add a separator between here, right here, and we'll call this one amount. We'll add another separator, call this rotation and close it up. Let's see what we got. So we'll come in here. So open up roughness and then anisotropy. So this looks great. Open it up. We have the amount and rotation with our offset value. And we're going to change the UI on that. So what we want to do for rotation is we want degrees of rotation. So I'm going to right click, edit resource, open up roughness. And I think I have this default uncheck that default closed. So with rotation, we're going to simply just go to the units and go to degree and change this. We'll just do one degree steps and we'll do neg 360, positive 360. And we can leave the value limits off. So there you go. Let's go inside. So these are done and they look good. Next, what we're going to do is emission. And this one's simple. So we're going to come and drag down, control drag connect emission in, click and let go. And with emission, you can add a remap in here. You can add a, a curve. I'm not going to do that, but um, I'm just going to leave it default. So that's just a one for one. Next, what we're going to do is opacity, which is going to be similar. Give it a name. And I like renaming these and grouping them up. So I'm going to go here because once you get a bunch that say file name, it gets kind of confusing. So our first group here is going to be emission. Default closed, input, drag this in, close it. Next one's opacity, so grab a group, drag it in, and we're almost done. So let's check it out. Emission, opacity, looks good. Now let's do bump, so I'll drag another version down. Add the input, and then with bumps, we need to have the available bump node because we want it nested. Get rid of the preview. We're gonna just plug it in, plug this into bump. And with bump, we wanna make this bump amount available. So I'm gonna do height field, and we're also gonna do input type. So we wanna be able to use either a vector, which is tangent space, or a height field, which is black and white. And we wanna be able to control that. So you can also make the remapping or do the curve adjustment if you want to add in between here. That's up to you. So I'm gonna drag this below, and I like making this node purple. So I'll add first the input type, and then the height scale. Right click in here, go to edit resource. Our file name got put is right here. Then we have input type and then we have height scale. So we're gonna add a group right below opacity, call it bump and we'll set the input to input and default closed. We'll add the file type in and then the height scale. Close it up and there's the bump. So that looks good. So you can see we have all the available settings that we want, the height field and the height scale. And you could add a curve in here so you can remap it. That's up to you. I didn't think it's necessary. And then our next one is going to be overall tint, which is actually AO. So we're going to plug this in. And so for AO to work, we want to be able to blend the amount. And what you do is you add a layer, a color layer, and we're gonna set the base to white, which means there's no AO. And then we're gonna only use the first input. So I'm gonna drag this into color layer one. We're gonna close this base layer because we don't need to see it. And then we're gonna add the mask in. Actually, we're gonna add the blend amount. So this guy here, so we're gonna add mask. And we're gonna call this amount. So I'm double clicking. And we don't need the second color or the mask. So I'll get rid of that. And then we'll plug it in to overall tint. And lastly, we're gonna take this purple one for displacement and we need a displacement node. I'm gonna add the node in, connect it, add displacement in. And same thing again, we're gonna do scale and the height type. And we can leave the space type if you want UV tangents and all that stuff or remapping, you can add that as well. We're gonna rename this one to amount or consistency and then map encoding. And we're gonna right click and say edit resource. So we're gonna add a group. 
a low bump, call it AO, and we're gonna say input. We're gonna add the file name and the amount. Close it up, and then we're gonna do one more group. Below AO, call it displacement, and set it to input, default closed. I think we have this one set to open as well. Bump's good. Okay, so we'll add our file name in and the amount. Make sure these are all set to default. And we forgot in our displacement, the map encoding. So I'll add that in next above the amount. Close it and we can try this out. So here's all of our channels. See color looks good. Metal looks good. We've got a remap on there. Roughness has a remap. Also has anisotropy. Let's check and see inside. We've got the amount and rotation headers in there. That looks good. Opacity looks good. Thump looks good. We have a height scale and the space. AO looks good. We have the blend amount and displacement. We have the amount and the height type. So next what I like doing is I like coming in here and deleting all of these input channels. And there we go. So we can select this now. So if I go here to my material, you can see everything's cooked up nicely, linked in properly. And we go to our universal texture loader. You can see we've got all the inputs that we have available to us. So what you can do is you can drag, control drag, save this project, call it universal texture loader, and then convert this by going to asset, convert to asset. And that will be able to be used on multiple projects. And then if this project gets shared between different computers where you don't have the database of this node save, what you can do is with it selected, you say edit asset as group and it converts it back into this original format and that will make it available to all computers. So what you want to do next is you want to test your texture out. So what I like doing is I like deleting all these connectors, loading up the textures in their channels, respective channels, and then just connecting them as I go. So I need, know I need roughness, let's say. I know I need bump and I know I need overall tint. I'm going to rename this actually from overall tint. Let me delete this one. I'm going to just rename this to overall tint. I'm going to just call this AO and there we go. So everything's in the correct order. Go ahead and test yours out with your new textures that you've downloaded off the interwebs and get going. This node is extremely useful and time saving so you don't have all these floating nodes going around your projects and it does a lot of the core common things that you would be doing anyway when you're working with image based textures. So it gets all of that node connecting out of the way for you and you don't have to keep doing it over and over with each texture. Oh and by the way check out my ultra triplanar texture node for using this with in between here. It'll be coming in very useful for future projects. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Thanks so much. Forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for your support.